So we continue with uh, Acts 23. Uh, today we'll be on verses 12 to verse 35. And I have divided into three points. And today we'll be looking at, at um, how, how Satan or how the, the wickedness is, uh, or, or evil tries to destroy God's people. And, and, and what we need to learn from these patches about that. And um, so first point we'll be looking at the devil's secret plot against God's people is to destroy them. Verses 12 to 15. Uh, let us read that together. Let's read. When it was morning, the Jews formed the conspiracy, bound themselves under a curse not to eat or drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who had formed this plot. These men went to the chief priests and elders and said, we have bound ourselves under Solomon's curse that we won't eat anything until we have killed Paul. So now you, along with the Sanhedrin, make a request to the commander that he bring him down to you as if you were going to investigate his case more thoroughly. But before he gets near, we are ready to kill him. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The devil's secret plot against God's people is to destroy them. Forty Jews made a, bi a binding oath not to eat or drink anything until they killed Paul. They conspired together with religious leaders to have Paul brought from prison for questioning so that they can ambush him and murder him during the transfer. In their conspiracy to, uh, to murder Paul, we can see here how the devil and his people secretly work and seek to destroy God's people. See, the truth of the matter is we don't know what Satan's plotting against us each day. We don't know what's going to happen to what's Satan plotting against us tomorrow or the next hour or so. We have no idea. The only person or the only thing that we, through which we come to know the plot of Satan is the word of God or God reveals it to us through his word. So we must come to God if we are to find out the plan and the plot, secret plot of Satan to destroy us. Firstly, if you look at verse 12, in the morning, they got up in the morning and conspired and began to, uh, to, to, to um, write up a plan or think up of a plan to destroy, to destroy Paul. My dear friends, don't think that Satan will leave you alone every day. The Satan and his people will already have a plan for your destruction by the time you get up in the morning to go to work and school. They're always working every day to bring up a plan, to conspire on how to kill or destroy God's people. Then that is why Christians need to begin our day with the word of the Lord so that we can protect ourselves through the word of God from the evil plan Satan, um, that Satan has for us every day. And how do we do that? Well, we're told in Ephesians 6, 17 to 18, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray all the times, at all times in the Spirit, with every prayer and request, and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. See, you can be sure that the devil will not leave you alone each day because we are told in verse 12, they are bound by an oath. They are bound by an oath to destroy God's people. In fact, 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 8 tells us that Satan is always seeking to devour anyone that he can find. But how are we to stand against Satan? Ephesians 6, verse 11 tells us, Put on the full armor of God, 
so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. You see, you will need the full armor of God because we are told in verse 13 that there, that, that there were 40, there were 40 people who conspired to kill, uh, to kill Paul. See, Satan is powerful. See, we will not be able to overcome Satan. We will not be able to resist the temptation of Satan on our own. He is powerful. There, there are many, as we heard the reading from Luke today. You see, Jesus was tempted by Satan in the desert, Matthew 4, 11 to, uh, 1 to 11. And Jesus repeatedly said, it is written. The word of God corrects and rebukes Satan. See, we cannot encourage you enough to read God's word. To read. And not, this is not just a, something that you need to tick the box every day, reading God's word. We are encouraging you to read your word. You know, I often hear some of you say, oh, I read God's word. I only read the, the four verses, the, the, the verses of the day. I only read uh, bits and pieces from here and there. And I only read the Bible when I have time and things like that. My dear friends, if that's the reason that you don't have time, and you will never have time to read God's word. You need to make time to read God's words. And for the word of God, we need it to guard us against Satan because Satan even uses the people within the church. Verse 14. They, uh, these Jews ask the religious leaders that they are to lie about bringing Paul. See, they used the people in the church. We often think that our opposition comes from outside the church, but the fact is the strongest opposition comes from within the church. Is it people going from us before because they are heartened to the teachings of the word that we teach here? Uh, and not only that, but people who are disagree with us because we, we tithe and and not only that, but we, there's no women preaching, and then we wear the head veil. And also we stress and we emphasize righteous living and holy living. I take it that's why a lot of people don't come to our church, because this is the thing that we emphasize, holy living. We preach holiness, but because of their hearts, it's heartened. They reject our teaching. Then that's why we ask you, young people, protect yourself from Satan, is to immerse yourself in the word of God. Trust that God is fighting for us against the conspiracy of Satan, their secret uh, plot and conspiracy to destroy us. Now, I'm just, just to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. He will, strengthen, he will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. You see, the Lord is faithful through his word. We immerse ourselves in God's word. We protect ourselves from the secret plot that Satan is thinking up every day. And he is more powerful than us to destroy us. We trust that our God is faithful. He will strengthen us and guard us from the evil one. Uh, our point two is, the secret plot by Satan against God's people are weakened when God's people are informed about it and exposed to the proper authority. Let us read verses 16 to 24. Let's read. But the son of Paul's sister, hearing about their ambush, came and entered the barracks and reported it to Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the commander because he has something to report to him. So he took him, brought him to the commander and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you because he has something to tell you. The commander took him by the hand, led him aside and inquired privately, What is it you have to report to me? The Jews, he said, 
have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the Sanhedrin tomorrow, as though they are going to hold a somewhat more careful inquiry about him. Don't let them persuade you, because there are more than 40 of them lying in ambush, men who have bound themselves under a curse not to eat or drink until they have killed him. Now they are ready, waiting for your consent. So the commander dismissed the young man and instructed him, don't tell anyone you have informed me about this. He summoned two of his centurions and said, get 200 soldiers ready with 70 cavalry and 200 spearmen to go to Caesarea at nine tonight. Also provide mounts to ride so that Paul may be brought safely to Felix, the governor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The secret plot of Satan against God's people are weakened when God's people are informed about it and exposed to the proper authority. Paul's nephew discovered the plot by the 40 Jewish men who were sworn to kill Paul. He then entered the barracks and informed Paul, and Paul also asked that he could inform the Roman commander about this secret plan. And the commander responded by organising a massive security um, soldiers of 470 to safety transport Paul by night to Governor Felix in Caesarea, protecting him from the assassination attempted and planned by the Jews. There is a need for the secret plans of Satan to be exposed. Paul's nephew did not withhold the information uh, that he heard from Paul. See, we need to warn others about Satan's secret plans to destroy his, God's people. That is the reason why we put much emphasis on preaching the word of God in our church. And not only that, but reading the Bible on a daily basis and prayer is so that we can inform others about the secret plan. And this is the only place where we know the secret plans of Satan because we are told in the Bible, see here John uh, 8, 44 tells us about Satan. He says, you, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He is, a, this Satan, he is a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature because he is a liar and the father of lies. You see, that's the reason why we always, we asked all of us to read the Bible so that we can come to know about Satan's secret plan, so that we can expose him, so we can warn you about it. And that's why we preach the word of God. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ so that we can be saved and be warned about the plot of Satan. My dear friends, as I said before, we don't encourage the church to read the Bible so that you can tick the box as a Christian duty. No. We want you to be delighted in God's words. Listen to what verse 100, Psalm 119 verse 16 says. I delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. You see, the psalm says he delights in God's words. That's what we want. We pray and we teach and we ask the church and especially the young people also is to delight in God's words and never forget God's words. It's not just a mental exercise. It ought to be part of your life that you love to hear God. Psalm 119 verse 47. I delight in your commands which I love. See, we don't just come to God's word just for some instruction on how to live a moral life. No, we come to God's word because we love God's words. We delight in God's words. And God's words, we are told, weakens the plot of Satan to destroy our people. I want to read to you 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8. And this is the words of God, weakens the plans of Satan. And then the lawless one will be revealed. The Lord Jesus will destroy him with the breath of his mouth and will bring him to nothing. 
at the appearance of his coming. You see, with the breath of his mouth, God will destroy the, the wicked one, will destroy the evil one. It's through the word of God we are protected from God's word. And that's why we need to expose the evil plan of Satan. We need to tell it, we need to speak about it from the Bible. We need to find it in God's word so that we can be protected by it from it as well. Not only that, but Paul exposed the plans of the Jews to the proper authority. See, the proper authority for us Christians is God. Uh, but also the authority here in uh, Australia, the police, uh, those who have the law, uh, we can report uh, anything that happens to us or any problems that, uh, that, 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 that happens to our lives, we can report that to the police because we are told in Romans 13 that all authority are instituted by God. See, but the proper authority for us Christians is when we know what Satan is doing to destroy us is to report it to God in prayer is to come to God in prayer and pray and give to God because God is the one that is able to destroy. He is the one that weakens the power of Satan. As we saw in the Jesus demonstrating in his conversation with Satan in the desert. Philippians 6, 6 to 7 tells us, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You see, Jesus will guard our hearts and minds against Satan. So we need to come and report it to the proper authority. What Satan is doing to destroy our lives, what does he does to, 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 to produce sin in our lives, we, we come and we report that we pray and ask God to guard our hearts and minds against Satan. Now let's just read Philippians 4, verse 7. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My last point is, will the letter, will, will the letter to save your life from Satan rescue you? Will the letter to save your life from Satan rescue you? That's verses 25 to 35. Let us read together. He wrote the following letter, Claudius Lysias, to the most excellent governor Felix. Greetings. When this man had been seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them, I arrived with my troops and rescued him because I learned there is a Roman citizen. Wanting to know the charge they were accusing him of, I brought him down before their Sanhedrin. I found out that the accusations were concerning questions of their law and that there were no was no charge that merited death or imprisonment. When I was informed that there was a plot against the man, I sent him to you right away. I also ordered his accusers to state their case against him in your presence. So the soldiers took Paul during the night and brought him to Antiparatus, as they were ordered. The next day they returned to the barracks, allowing the cavalry to go on with him. When these men entered Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Paul to him. After he read it, he asked what province was from. When he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I'll give you a hearing whenever your accusers also get here. He ordered that he be kept under guard in Herod's palace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will the letter to save your life from Satan rescue you? So these verses begins with Claudius Lysia, the Roman commander, writing a letter to Governor Felix, explaining Paul's situation. He explains how he rescued Paul from the Jews who were trying to kill him uh, and mentioned that he discovered Paul as a Roman citizen. But the purpose of the letter is to clarify that the accusation against Paul were about Jewish religious law rather than any crime deserving death or imprisonment is a letter to ensure that Paul was innocent. Paul uh, 
what did not commit any crime deserving of death or imprisonment, and to also ensure his safety, uh, and that the, which the commander arranged a large military escort, and uh, the soldiers were instructed to take Paul to Governor Felix. So, my dear friends, just say if a letter was written about you to save you from Satan, to save you from being put to death, what would the letter say? Would the letter speak in favour of you? Would the letter speak that you are innocent, that you are not guilty of any crime or any sins? Would the letter speak about how you were treated unfairly, like Paul? Or will the letter speak condemnation into you, about you? We know from Colossians 2.14, there is a letter about our lives which says that we are in debt and the letter about us stands in opposition to us in Colossians 2.14. And this letter is not just for sinners out there, not here in the church. This letter, we are told, is for everyone. Because we're told in Romans 3.23, all people have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. So our letter is a letter, if we sent it so that we can be saved from Satan, it will stand in opposition against us. And God's wrath will come upon us. Because we know for those who have fallen short, Romans 6.23 tells us, the wages of sin is death. My dear friends, I want you to think, think hard about what kind of letter will be written about you for your life to be rescued from God's judgment. What kind of letter? Would the letter say that, yeah, Tevita and Francisi will be, you know, they're innocent, they please accept them and rescue them? from the destruction that uh, Satan is planning up against them? Or would the letter speak about your justification? You see, the same letter that stands in opposition against us in Colossians 2.14 also tells us that that letter was taken by Jesus Christ and nailed to the cross. And by nailing it to the cross, he sets us free. He rescues us from the wrath of God. He rescues us from our sins. And that is the letter that gives us life. It's the letter of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are told in Romans 1.16, if we can read that together. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So through the gospel, our lives are justified. We are given life through the letter, through the story of the gospel. That's how we are justified. Romans 5 is through that Christ died for us while we were still sinners so that we can be set free, so that we can be rescued from the judgment that is due to us. Let us respond in prayer to the gospel by asking, the, asking Jesus to help us to Reveal to us the secret plan or the plot of Satan to destroy our lives through his word and that he will protect us through his word by exposing the sin, the, 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 the scheme of Satan, helping us to trust in his word to guard and protect us and help us to praise and trust in Jesus Christ for dying for us so that we can be justified that the letter to save us will speak favorably of us because it is the gospel. Let us pray.